We now reach the the most juicy part, which uh, many of you have been waiting for quite a long time now. And uh, I've been working on these guys, I've been working on the brushes for quite a lot. And uh, the main idea behind these brushes is that they will allow you to express yourself in a very organic, deliberate, but also spontaneous way. But before mentioning, before talking about each single brush, I want to show you the two materials which are also included. And you simply need to click on each one of them. So, digital clay terracotta. This is, uh, this will give you uh, an idea of terracotta. And we can try to fire a quick cinematic render of it to try and see. And so you can see in the bottom part, which is a bit more uh, worked. It works very nicely, it sort of mimics uh, very nicely the quality of uh, quality of a clay sketch. Second material is the material you probably already have. I share this and you can download this material for free together with, um, with a few samples of my older light setups. So this is the signature um, digital clay material of the series slightly less shiny I would say let's try to have a maybe a different light setup and you'll notice that the areas which are a bit more worked they always behave a bit more realistically because um, of course clay is uh, very alive so it really depends on what you do with it. Now we reach probably the most requested and awaited feature of this uh, essential toolkit, and it's the custom brushes. It's uh, what you see is a set of nine custom brushes, which I completely uh, redesigned from scratch, and they represent everything which I've done throughout the series. The spark behind these brushes is not to give you a simple alpha or a simple stamp to repeat on the on the mesh but the main idea behind all these guys is to give you a very organic and imperfect and spontaneous powerful way to create digital sculpture in a way which makes you feel like you're really pushing and pulling the clay we just want to have a few simple brushes which allows you full creative freedom. Let's see each one of them. So the first one is the basic one. So basically, they are in order of, uh, of suggested use. So they're the most versatile towards the, most, towards the more textural and subtle ones. Okay, the first one is called Add and Push. Once you learn how to use it, and uh, then you can start to create then you can start to create by literally feeling like if you are pulling inside the clay with your finger so it's a very simple brush with a very simple alpha it's all within the settings and the idea of this guy is that you know maybe you are just uh, uh, you're just at the beginning uh, low subdivision levels and so you just want to create a lot of quick mass okay and so you can just use it uh, in a very immediate way but then I recommend you to immediately go on top of it and use the Alt brush. This is really when the add and push comes alive because it creates the sort of sense of, hey, now I'm carving in. And literally, I suggest, I recommend you to play with a, uh, to use a tablet, absolutely, or even more a Wacom monitor tablet or a Huion monitor tablet or whatever you, you prefer because that's when you will really, really feel the sensitivity of the brushes and really that will start to, that will start to feel like clay. And as you see, we don't have a massive uh, alpha on these guys. We don't have actually very complex alphas. It's all about learning to use them. So they're, they're actually 
quite tricky these brushes because you need to learn you know you need to learn to feel them in the but it's all I'm doing now basically I'm drawing a stroke and then going on top of it with alt and as you can see literally it's like if you're plugging your your uh, if you're pressing with your fingers in it so this is the most versatile we can use it in a more textural way for the second brush I want to show you in action with uh, what I did in um, with my episode 9 sculpt so let's say that we want to um, work on this kind of ideas like I did on the hair so that is where this brush comes in okay so it's uh, so it's big ideas bolder still with a very clay-like feel but more messy so just be aware that when you're using this guy you will have a bunch of uh, interesting interesting it all depends on your hand you know play with your hand be very sensitive with your hand and don't be afraid of all these marks because this is what we're after actually when you clean them remember you will train your artistic sensitivity you will train your artistic path in understanding what to keep and what to discard that's part of that beautiful uh, perfect imperfection we mentioned is in episode 9 and that's the whole idea behind all these brushes you know uh, perfect imperfections going after that authentic uh, human-like quality okay we don't care too much we don't care too much about um, perfect stamps or alphas we want these very strong organic brushes to help us in breaking through our creative freedom you know the third brush is called layers this is literally so you want to be very subtle with it but you can also be very uh, bold you know alt will not work with this so don't just don't use alt so it's really cool because it gives that sort of um, clayish idea gives you layer you know when you can <clears throat> sometimes also you want to have that sense of layering and you will see how they all interact with each other brush number four dry finish you can use it either at uh, low Z intensity to create the dry texture uh, you will see that when you have very clean areas of your uh, sculpture this allows you to break the flat idea of the sculpture you will see that in, on, on the nose for example here don't use it too much because uh, don't use it too much you know you need to be you need to develop a sensitivity with these brushes okay or then you can use it with this case it will become a very textural brush and literally it changes the dynamics the sort of um, brushed finger brush idea the fifth brush the broken comb this is the more uh, particular one to use and maybe you can do something like this with this brush and you will notice that usually you want to use it with quite a clean clean surface and this guy reacts to your hand very very quickly so see how it changes see all the beautiful variations that happens you need to spend time and become quite intimate with these brushes <clears throat> usually I use this um, brush in combination with old spatula which uh, is basically this sort of uh, and creates this sort of very cool textured effect the last two they are a bit more um, they are a bit more of um, there are two variations of knives the first one is an engraving knife and I usually use this to create this sort of variations you can use it like this to create a bit more of texture or to create uh, for example for example annotations like I did in the digital clay study head this is done with this uh, 
This is done with the engraving knife. Or you can also use it uh, in this case um, with a very small size and with with a very low intensity, one or even two, to create a tiny bit of uh, you know a tiny bit of uh, of rough marks on your sculpture. Okay, maybe you maybe you used your your knives. I, I use them, and I use them a lot in this way, in this sort of textural way. If you want to have a very in-depth overview of all the of how I use these brushes to create this guy. You can just check out episode number nine. It's me basically for one hour improvising and riffing uh, with the Digital Clay Essentials uh, brush kit. The other thing you will uh, you will find in your essentials are the light setups. Okay, let's see some of these lights in action. Okay, let's now reach the cinematic render. This will automatically apply a combination of filters and uh, render settings, which will create the signature look using my renders. I suggest you to use the template essentials a ZBrush scene whenever you want to have the best results for the cinematic render. In this way, you can easily match your sculpture size and scale to the template heads, and this will allow you the best results in terms of the cinematic render. Also notice that if you will change the focal length of your camera from the settings which are in the digital clay essential scene, most likely the depth of field blur and some other effects will need to be calibrated again. You will need to go into the BBR filters and play again with the range. And also remember the cinematic render button will actually set all of the parameters of the render settings. So if you play with something and when you wanna customize it a little bit, Remember, after the first time you used it, to then use the normal BPR render by either pressing Shift R or just going or just clicking manually Best Preview Render. It's always been a pain for me to generate turntables or renders or animated renders from ZBrush. And so I created my own little tool, which basically automatically renders either a 360 turntable of your sculpt from your current camera position or the other option is that instead of generating a 360 you can actually generate a render of your animation timeline so let's say that i want to create a render like this one first we want to make sure we created at least two keyframes in our timeline the timeline is accessible from the movie palette mine is a very simple beginning and end frame now, second thing, remember the 360 tool will generate a render sequence by using the latest PPR render settings in your scene. So first, we need to make sure we're satisfied with our BPR render. Now, once you're happy with your animation and your BPR render, we are ready to render. Just click on the 360 button, select the folder where you wanna save out the resulting image sequence, and now you'll be prompted with the option rendering a 360 animation by clicking yes or by clicking no the tool will actually render out your own custom timeline so the tool will go through and generate a 30 frame per second image sequence based on the total length that you set up in your movie palette at the end just head into the folder which you set and you will see a PNG render sequence which you can quickly put together into a movie in your favorite editing software. What if you want to instead render out a 360? So you don't need any keyframes, just click on 360 again. This time, instead of pressing no, just press yes. So pressing yes will output the 360 and pressing no will output the custom animation from your timeline. We're at the end of our walkthrough for our Essentials Toolkit. My most treasured sculpting principles and digital tools which I use are contained in this minimal toolkit. 
and at the base of uh, this toolkit, at the base of Essentials, it's the same spark which is at the base of the whole Digital Clay project. We want to disintegrate the barrier between traditional and digital sculpture. We try to declutter the amazing complexity of, of this program of ZBrush and transform it into an extension of your, of your hands and your heart so that you can literally focus on what matters most. I hope this tool will help you into breaking through those barriers and into feeling that your sculpture matters, because it does. So if you want to know more about Essentials, you just need to check out the website digitalclay.xyz or just look at the description, you will find all the links, you will find the links to the, to the Facebook community where you can just come in and, and share your experiments and find some sincere and honest support for your work. We're creating a very special community centered around the art of sculpture in digital clay. So thank you for being part of this. Thank you for appreciating and actually showing up and putting your art out. Stay safe and keep sculpting.